All right, we're live. Okay, thank you. So I'd like to call to order the uh, City Council Ad Hoc Committee uh, form for the uh, property tax abatement for volunteer firefighters, EMTs, and paramedics. Uh, it's being held at 6.35 p.m. on Thursday, beginning then at Thursday, May 13th, 2021. Uh, the members on the committee are myself, Councilman Jack Knapp is the chair, Councilman John Priola and Councilman Dwayne Perkins. So we are the committee. Uh, we have with us uh, Finance Director David St. Hilaire, uh, Corporation Counsel Les Pinter, uh, Tax Assessor Donna Murphy. Uh, we have Acting Fire Chief Kevin Ford. I've also asked uh, Deputy Chief uh, Bernie Meehan to join with us. And um, the petitioners for this um, application is, uh, and I'll read them in order, all Councilman, Councilman Roberto Alves, Councilman Rich Molinero, Councilman Ben Chianese, Councilman Frank Salvatore, Councilman Farley Santos, and Councilman Bob Tabersack. Currently, we have Councilman Chianese, uh, Salvatore, and Santos present. So uh, we're going to begin in hopes that they uh, soon join us. So, uh, okay. Roberto Alves is here, too. Roberto's in the house. Okay. So Roberto Alves is present. I'm here too, Mr. All right. Yes. All right. Uh, yes. No, I'm going to go through that. I, thanks, John. So uh, I have, and if I miss anybody, let me know, but I have here um, ex officio members, Councilman uh, John Esposito, Councilman Vinnie DeGilio, and Councilman Warren Levy. Are there anybody else that are ex officio that I might have missed? Okay. Thank you. And we'll keep an eye if People do chime in, just let me know, Taylor, and we can include them in the record. Okay, so um, as we do it every ad hoc, I'm gonna call on Les Pinter just for a basic overview of what we're looking at here, and then we'll go to the petitioners. Um, and so Les, if you could just uh, reflect on what we've got in front of us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Um, and hi to everybody on the call tonight. So this uh, meeting was called uh, at the request of the city council um, uh, appointing this ad hoc committee to dovetail with an earlier ad hoc committee from 2007 on the issue of statutory language enabling the adoption of an ordinance for property tax abatement for volunteer firefighters and other volunteers. Um, further, the petition for this, as the chairman stated at the beginning, came from listed members of the council by letter of January 11, 2021. That's how it got to the council. In that letter, president of the council, DeGilio, was asked for consideration of that 2007 issue, which never emerged from the ad hoc committee at the time. There were discussions, there were some draft, initial draft language done on this issue in 2007, but again, it lied dormant and uh, came to life when the petitioner's letter was submitted in January. Now that letter pointed to the relevant statute 12-81W, which has been amended a couple of times since 2007. That was pointed out by the uh, petitioners who have uh, done a very diligent job in reviewing the information and presenting it and requesting the council to appoint this committee. And that's the committee, Chairman Knapp, that's before you. Um, although we haven't, our office has not done a full and extensive research across the state, our understanding is there are a number of communities that have adopted ordinances um, to follow through on 12-81W. I don't think they're all alike, they're similar because the statute itself permits the municipality to adopt an ordinance that suits its purposes, so long as it's within the general guidelines of that statute. Um, and the initial draft from 2007 indicated that because it set up a, a number of systems, tiered systems for volunteers to receive the tax benefits. Now that was in 2007, things have happened, but the basic parameters of the intent to provide assistance to volunteers remains. Um, and we can get into the detail, uh, 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 although it's not that detailed, some very basic things about it. The intention, of course, is to provide this abatement assistance to individuals who faithfully volunteer their services, either as firefighters or other listed classifications. So it's before you, uh, bottom line is before you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee to consider whether the city of Danbury should review and adopt an ordinance 
to fulfill the purposes of 12-81W. Okay, thank you for that, Les. Um, all right, so the way I see it, um, a couple of things that I just want to get out on the table here. So uh, we've got six council people that have put this petition forward, and thank you. I know uh, Councilman Salvatore sent me over some information, a bunch of information, um, and has done a ton of work on this. So uh, to that end, we thank, thank you for that, Frank. Um, I really want to, when we're discussing things tonight, let's stay focused on the matter at hand and the and the, uh, what's germane to the request here. You know, we all love the volunteer firemen and, you know, we've all got friends and family that serve in the volunteer firemen somehow, some way. And I'm sure we've all got a great story to tell when it comes to the, to the volunteers, but uh, we, let's just please try to remain uh, germane to, to what's going on here. Um, I've been researching a lot of it myself um, through, you know, I've met with the fire department with Chief Ford and, and, and a few of the uh, firemen there. Uh, I've spoken to several of the volunteers. I've talked to Les, I've talked to um, Donna Murphy, our tax assessor, just trying to get a basic feeling for the direction that this could and might go. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call on, I, I believe, uh, Mr. Salvatore, if you don't mind, I'll spearhead towards you, knowing that, you know, you've done, uh, and, and I'm only speculating this, but I believe you've probably done most of the research on this and the work on this. So you probably have the most uh, answers as to what we might be looking for. So if you could just please just let us know what you're looking for in this request, and then we can maybe take it from there. I'm thinking that, you know, there's, there's not, you know, I've got a whole bunch of, of different um, ordinances that other towns are using. So, you know, I think we can streamline it to a few basic facts, but we just need to get to the end of those facts. So I don't see this as being a one night meeting. I think that we've got, you know, a few nights ahead of us to get the proper information for us to be able to present to the full council. So, uh, Frank, I'll, I'll turn it over to you if you could just uh, reflect on, on your position on this. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That was a nice way of putting it. Everybody says Frank's too verbose. So be yeah, I, less well, verbose. I get it. I get it. I've been in this a long time. Not maybe well, not in you've city got, politics. You've, you've, you've got Ben here too, though. So, you know, I got to make sure that I share the credit. <laughs> yeah. So listen, Les pretty much rehashed the letter and that that's the basis. But the whole purpose of bringing this forward was the fact that it's been brought to the city council twice before one time turned down back in 2000 or 2001 and then it went nowhere in 2007 there are approximately 450 uh danbury volunteers who have served anywhere from newly minted volunteers to 50 plus years not all those volunteers live in the city of danbury about 48% of them live in Danbury. Anybody who knows volunteerism today is something that is becoming somewhat of a, a lost item and including in the fire service. Okay. We need to find ways and we have a very unique city. Okay. We have a career and volunteer fire department that does work well together. Okay. But volunteers are harder to come by. And like you said, there are many towns, every town surrounding Danbury, okay, has some sort of abatement. And in 2017, when CCM created their guide for uh, volunteer firefighter recruitment and retention, uh, at that time in the whole state, there may have been only the equivalent of maybe 10 towns that did this. Since then, it has blossomed municipalities have used this to recognize not only the hard work in training and responding to calls, uh, but to retain these people because it takes a lot to educate them. And the fire department will tell you, they're the primary teachers of the firefighter course. And there's nothing worse for them to spend 180 plus hours in a firefighter course and have people a year or two later leave. Now, if they leave for the career fire service, we've done our job. Okay. But leave all together. We've lost them. So my goal is to get this on the books and get some sort of a retention tool 
for the Danbury volunteers to attract good members of the volunteer fire department and to keep them for the long term. Okay. All right. Um, so the way I've looked at it, and again, I've looked at several, uh, a multitude of the different towns around us, as well as a few throughout the state with information that's been afforded me. Um, the, the way I read it, there's basically like three or four real critical areas that we need to, to uh, dive into. And I don't know that we're going to do that tonight. I think we need to come up with a game plan as to how we're going to dive into them. But, you know, the things that I see is uh, in looking at all the different ones throughout the state, how is this going to be administered here in the city? And that's basically why we have the tax assessor and the director of finance here, because that would come out of their, uh, their realm you know, who's going to qualify for it. You know, you mentioned 450, you know, the one thing I did learn recently and meet with some of my buddies that are volunteers was the, the green, yellow, and red system that I, that I had never heard about. So, you know, are we going to qualify everybody? Are you looking to qualify everybody? Are we just, just looking to greens? You know, how are we going to do that? Because I'm sure there's going to be council people that are going to want to weigh in on that. Um, and then how much we're going to actually afford the people. If you look throughout the state, some towns pay them by the call. Some towns, you know, they pay them by years of service. Some towns are, are doing, they've got a, you know, a, a qualifying system where, you know, you've got to make a certain amount of calls. You've got to make a certain amount of meetings and uh, you've got to be a certain level of fireman. So a uh, firefighter one or firefighter two. So I think that all of this really needs to, I, and I'm going to look back to you on this, Frank. I think that this is something that, I don't know that the council is the one that needs to be determined in this. I think this really needs to be determined with communication through and with the volunteers, whether it's the volunteer. Well, we got to have everybody on the same page. So we got to get the volunteer council to basically give you what they feel is fair and equitable. You know, so let's understand that. And, um, you know, and once you've got that, then we can get less involved. We can create a, a template, if you will, of, of the ordinance that we're going to want to use. And then we as a committee can maybe, you know, if we're looking, if we feel it's too much of a reach, maybe we want to amend some things. But, you know, I think that's important that we, I mean, it is the volunteers and they know their business. So let's, you know, let's see what the, the wishes are. But they've got to realize that this is not a, you know, it's not a giveaway here. So we've got to make sure that we're doing the, uh, the right thing for our taxpayers because they're ultimately the one that's paying for this. So, uh, so with that being said, um, you know, Councilman Perkins and Councilman Priola, you know, I didn't know if you wanted to weigh in on the statements that I just made. I know you, both of you, I've had conversations with. Um, so, you know, is there anything you wanted to, to bring to the table before I move on with this? John? I got you. John, yep. yeah. Mr. Yep. Priola. I just unmuted myself. Yeah. Um, one part of it that I would, uh, I think it's a different aspect of what you've been speaking about, um, and I don't expect an answer tonight, but uh, to less, um, I'd be curious as to how we're going to identify when it comes to the city council voting for this, who would be eligible to vote and uh, who would not be eligible to vote based upon their involvement uh, in the volunteer houses. That's a very uh, good question, uh, Councilman Priola. Uh, <clears throat> so the way that would work is that, and, and this is the standard, regardless of the particular issue at hand, if you have a, a member of the voting body, the legislative body who uh, has a personal interest or could have a personal interest or benefit arising derived from the legislation that's adopted, that individual would have to recuse himself. And that's been the tradition of recusal um, when someone could um, obtain a benefit um, under the adopted legislation. Um, there are provisions in our code of ordinances, provisions in the charter, which overlap in some respects, but they generally state that very proposition. So we also, uh, we also have the uh, City Board of Ethics, which is referenced in the code of ordinances, which would be able to make determinations in cases like this, where an individual or individuals would have two hats, they would serve as members of the legislative body and possibly uh, volunteers of different kinds, whether it be firefighters or other volunteers, 
And, and by virtue of wearing those two hats, the possible conflict could arise and an advisory opinion of the Board of Ethics could be requested to make those determinations, but not only determination, but also to provide some guidelines for people so they know where they stand when it comes to uh, casting a vote in the matter. I'm not the one that w- would like to be determined to say, you can't vote, you can't, the other guy can't vote. Um, I think what we do is we would come to consensus for what the law says. Um, and ideally, the Board of Ethics would be able to provide that so that everybody feels that a neutral party, uh, so selected by the Code of Ordinances itself, uh, individuals who have no stake in the game would be in a position to render their uh, authority and opinion on that. So I guess that's a long way to answer your question, Councilman Priola, but that would be the way it would cut, in my view. Okay. Okay. John, does that answer? Oh, wait, Frank, does that... You for tonight, you, for tonight, yes. For tonight, okay. Uh, Mr. Salvatore. Just to be clear, you guys already know that I've already made it publicly known that I have and will abstain from any vote uh, it, like this one. But I also believe less that there is no law, no ordinance that precludes me from advocating for this, correct? That's correct. That's correct. And I so would that... also, mm-hmm. I would also, I would also be all for uh, debarring anybody from applying for this as uh, if they're an elected official um, from being able to ever benefit from this. So I just want to make sure everybody's clear. I am going to advocate for this. You don't even have to think twice. I'm not voting for this on the floor, but I will be an advocate of it because there's nothing against that. So I would like to put that to rest right off the bat. Sure. Of course. No, that sounds... That sounds more than fair and equitable, um, and that's something that we would also want to include probably in the uh, in the uh, ordinance when we did create it or do create it. In the meantime, we're going to need to learn. I'm not sure who's volunteers. I know is Warren on here. I think Warren's still a volunteer. You know, so I just want to make sure that we. Uh, I don't. I don't know who is and who is. So we just have to make sure that everybody who knows, you know, who is a volunteer realizes the direction we're going with this. And to your point, there's nothing to stop in any of this process with the ad hoc committee from any of us participating, whether you are a volunteer or not, whether I think that whether it's less or the ethics board that determines it for the actual council meeting, when it gets to that, we can, we can clean that up for that. So, uh, yeah, okay. And I'd welcome so that, that. I'm not saying I don't yeah. welcome that, but that's fine. Sure. Okay. All right. Um, David Mr. St. Hilaire, did you, yeah. uh, M- 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 Mr. Yeah. Chairman? Yes, sir. Hold on. Uh, Mr. Perkins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. To you. Uh, I'm happy to be part of this process again. I was one of the ones that was um, on the ad hoc back in 2007. And um, I don't remember a lot of the rock solid information that come out that came out of that meeting, but I do remember thinking it was a good thing, uh, pr- provided it's in the purview of the taxpayers and also how complex it was. Both of those things haven't changed yet. Um, but it's our intention to, to try to find out as much information as we can about this entire process and just properly vet it. But what I would like to do is just reflect back to uh, some of the things that were just said, you know, dealing with the uh, um, ethic type issue. Uh, uh, I believe the um, petitioner mentioned that members of the city council or anyone serving on the city council would be excluded from participating in this um, tax abatement. Is that what I heard correctly? I believe that's the way that Mr. Salvatore was discussing it to put it into the next. I I used the word debarred uh, from being a part of this. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, just off the top of my head, I'm not even sure if if, um, the, the council member can do that. That would something that'd be something that the entire council body would make a determination on. Um, if, for example, I mean, let's just say you had a volunteer getting the abatement and all of a sudden they decided to participate in another form of public service being on the council, they'd lose their, they'd lose their rebates or their um, tax abatement. I, I'm not sure if that's really, really the right way to do it or if that's fair. So that's something that we would need to, you know, consider as well. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I just I just want to ask a, just a couple of general questions to the petitioners. Uh, in addition to this is as far as recruitment. In addition to um, you know putting the sandwich signs up in front or other types of possibly social media, what what efforts are being made to um, recruit? Well, every every firehouse, you can go by a lot of the firehouses, they have signs up outside the firehouse. Almost every firehouse in Danbury has a Facebook page. Uh, and they they do um, put stuff out there. And every firehouse has a work night. And what they do is they invite people to come to the work night to see what's going on. And if it's something they want to do, they give them an application. So uh, there's been many different uh, ways. Uh, you have Charlie Coakley, the president of the Volunteer Firemen's Council on here. So he could also probably uh, know of some other membership uh, driveways also, if you want to ask him. Yeah, I, we, we'll, we'll hear from him shortly. Um, I'm just going to change direction slightly. Um, you know, as, as an adult educator, we, we teach our students about systems theory, uh, how complex mechanisms are interrelated, how one change in one part can affect other parts, whether intentionally or unintentionally. Um, I just, I, I just would like an opinion maybe uh, from, from Corporation Council on the uh, re renumeration of some way to distinguish between an employee and a volunteer because once those lines become blurred and you do fall into that category of an employee based on the renumeration, you could be also subjected to, or at least the city, to those different types of um, Fair Labor Standards Act. So I, I just wanna know from the opinion of Corporation Council, what, his opinion on, on that distinction, that remuneration, and how we could distinguish employees from volunteers because by virtue of the numeration, now you're almost becoming an employee. So I, I would like to hear uh, the opinion on that. Councilman Perkins, thanks for that. Um, there is a there is a line of demarcation there. It's it's relatively straightforward. You can't be paid. You have to be a volunteer, whether it be a firefighter or other classification that's listed. So basically, it's providing free service for the benefit of your community or your area. And that individual, uh, by law, if a, a locality adopted an ordinance, would be entitled to a tax abatement of whatever the uh, leg the legislature adopts in that community. It could be up to $2,000, or there's another method as well to calculate the, the benefit. The benefit would accrue to volunteers. So if you're an employee, uh, by definition, you're not a volunteer. If you're paid, by definition, you're not a volunteer. So it's limited to that classification. I think that's Councilman Salvatore's assent and, and, and the other uh, folks um, petitioning that's essentially the value of it, that people who uh, faithfully volunteer their services, put themselves on the line, whatever way they do, uh, when called to it, would be able to not only receive an abatement um, as thanks for their service, but to perhaps encourage others to come in. So I, I don't think we need to reach uh, the issues of non-volunteers uh, for purposes of this uh, ordinance. We will a, be fully able to make those distinctions in the uh, drafted ordinance, which will be clear to everybody. Okay, and just one final uh, follow, uh, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so I, I just want to, to, you know, get get that out there because, again, based on these different types of tests that are available for this whole renumeration thing, I don't want to put the petitioners in a situation where we all of a sudden are not volunteers anymore. We're considered some type of individual receiving a monetary value. Um, and that's the only way I know how to put it. But if, if you're saying that that's not a concern of ours, um, I'm happy with your, with your answer. Yeah, I, I, would not, I would not classify this as remuneration. I don't think I've seen that in legislation anywhere, uh, certainly not in the statute and elsewhere. So I think this would be classified as what it is. It's, a, it's an abatement of tax uh, for classified individuals. Okay. Mr. Thank Chairman, you. if I may. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yes, Mr. Chanese. Thank you. Um, again, through the chair, 
to kind of answer Councilman Perkins' question, the city does have other types of programs where volunteers do perform a service for the city and they get paid a, a, an abatement. I think they actually get paid. Uh, David can correct me wrong. It's the Senior Citizens Work Program where they volunteer and they, get, and they can get paid up to $600 for their volunteer service. So we kind of have something in place that kind of will distinguish between an employee and a volunteer. So in this program, you kind of be mirroring that in a way as far as the abatement piece goes, but it's, you know, it's, except with a different set of requirements. So I hope that answers a little bit more of what we're trying to do. So the city does have a program similar of, for tax abatements. Yeah, and I think that you're gonna find in uh, Chief Ford or, or Deputy, um, Deputy Chief uh, Bernie, um, if you could just reflect, I believe um, the workman's comp program that we already are offering them gets into a, a bit of a sticky wicket, if you will, on employees and volunteers and whatnot. And it's already being done and there's already state, legis uh, state legislature out there uh, pertaining to this that, that would probably make this fall into the same category. Chief, am I right on that or wrong on that or deputy chief? Uh, yeah, so so there are a lot of programs out there. What we have to be careful of is the way we structure the program. It's not prohibited. And if we structure it right, it would not be considered income. And that would, because if we did it in a certain way that, that it was construed as income, it would actually hurt the volunteers receiving it. It would be taxable. It would actually throw us into some FLSA um, issues. But I, um, I have a, a white paper that the um, International Associ Association of Fire Chiefs have uh, written on the topic that gives some guidance as to how to structure this thing so as not to um, endanger the city of being in, in, in um, violation of any FLSA rules and to not make the volunteers who receive some kind of um, benefit fall into some kind of income tax uh, problem. So I can share that with, with, with this membership. I, I didn't wanna just start sending stuff out willy nilly, but I can share that uh, paper with the board. Um, I'm gonna ask Chief Meehan to address more than that. Um, Bernie, if you will, you had said you knew some stuff about the, uh, the workman's comp rules and things like that. Would you mind uh, opining on that? Sure, can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay, uh, as the, the Chief is correct, um, the state requires a municipality to provide workman's compensation insurance. And as uh, Attorney Pinter stated too, this is outside of those uh, legislations, the uh, tax abatement program. It was taxed for a while on a person's uh, personal income tax. That was corrected this year. Uh, so, so those of us that are volunteers that received the tax abatement program over the last, uh, I think it's 19 years maybe that uh, I've been involved with it in my hometown. Uh, we pay taxes on that and that have, was uh, corrected this year. Uh, and that was an account, an accounting uh, issue as well uh, within the voluntary organizations. But uh, other than that, I, I don't think there's that much more to look at other than uh, as attorney Pinter said, if the, uh, a municipality does the program, uh, it's not construed as income, at least, especially anymore since they corrected the tax loophole. Mm. Thank Mr. you. Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Salvatore. Just, uh, I, I have sent uh, a few people, including yourself, the sample abatements of the towns around us. That came from a sample abatement uh, that the Connecticut Council of Municipalities put out there. And you'll notice that the language is pretty clear. What we're advocating for here is a benefit that will mean the reduction in real or motor vehicle property taxes, not money to the volunteer. So there will be no money changing hands. It would be a decrease in their tax bill based on whatever we decide. Um, and as you said, it, it, it started off at like $500 and the new law that went into effect in 2019 actually says that as of July 1st, municipalities could offer up to $2,000. So, you know, again, and I have a sample abatement that, you know, if we want to start at some point to be able to have good discussions, 
I think, you know, if the, the committee wants, it could go to them and, and to um, attorney Pinter and you can start playing with it from that point of view, because then that could be where all the questions come from. Who? I'm not looking for, you know, probably every volunteer because we have to do our due diligence. But, you know, when you look at it, you're talking about 164 to 200 volunteers total who live in Danbury. Okay. So, you know, you're, you're not talking huge numbers, but you got to think down the line too, because if this works and you get more volunteers, the numbers go up. So I just wanted to put that out there. Okay. Thank you on that. And that's, you know, it goes back to what I said before. We just need to, we need to build this. And yes, definitely. We're going to need to get the, uh, the council involved or the uh, volunteer council. Um, okay. So, Again, I think that the, the real task at hand here is for your, you, yourself as the petitioners to um, get in contact with the, with the members of the council and come up with a, a basic draft, if you will, of the ordinance that you want to do so that we know the bullet points that we're working with. It's, you know, I mean, we've got uh, the finance director and the tax assessor here tonight, but we really don't have numbers that we can this is a great idea. This is not a great idea. This is too much. This isn't too much. We really don't have that, those facts at this point in time. So until we have that, um, you know, it's going to be, it, it'll be tough for us to, to move anything forward. So I think that's the, the onus we're going to put on you, you, uh, your, your team is the uh, petitioners to, to make that happen and get back to us here. Um, so yeah, and again, administering who qualifies and the amounts is really the three big things. I have an ordinance. It's pretty interesting because I've seen some of them that it looks like, you know, the less pinters of the world wrote because if you ever hear the motions that get made at the meetings, you can tell when less wrote them and when we wrote them ourselves. So, um, so there's what, some of these that are 20 pages long and there's some of them that are two and three. So I think we need to find a happy medium there. I think the goal has to be and this is of all the groups that I've talked to administering. This is going to be the nightmare. And this is what I've heard from other departments. You know, I've got friends that are volunteers over in New York state that have a program that talk about it. And the very first thing they talked about was how it's going to be administered. You know, I've got people uh, from the city that I've talked to that are all very concerned is how this is going to be administered. You know, this, I don't see this being like the uh, senior um, tax uh, reductions or the, the veterans, uh, the programs we have there, but because that's handled more internally by the city, I see this to be handled through the, through the council, you know, and through the fire department, you know, to the, to the tax collector. So we need to, when you're, when you're doing your draft, when you're working through that, that is probably the most important area of concern that I've heard from everybody. You know, we can't, we can't be creating a, a logistic nightmare that we got to hire another city employee to manage this. So, uh, so that's something there. And then, uh, is there any other, before I turn it over to ex officio members, is there any other uh, questions from either Mr. Priola or Mr. Perkins at this time? Okay. Mr. Priola. Yep. Um, one other item, if I could request that I think would be helpful for me, um, that would be from the petitioners. Um, there was a good collection of uh, agreements for the surrounding towns of Danbury, but I was wondering that if the information is available, if we could see what those arrangements might look like from some of the largest cities in the state. Yeah. Okay. So you understand what we're looking for there? What he's looking for there, Frank? So you're looking so, for the ordinances? Yeah. So in other words, what? like we know that, you know, in, in talking to the, the chief today, I understand that, you know, Fairfield's got a large paid department, a small volunteer. Stanford's got a large paid and a small volunteer, but they're cities as opposed to the smaller towns where the only thing they have is volunteers. So we're looking for something to be able to use as a, as a um, reference point from some of the larger cities that might have this in effect. I'm pretty sure both of those towns do. So I think that's what Councilman Priol would be looking for. Similar to the uh, documents that were provided for the small surrounding towns, just a similar yeah. document from some of the larger cities. Okay, so you want a point of reference from larger cities, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right, and then um, 
ex officio members that I have present, which I think are Councilman Levy, Councilman DiGiulio, Councilman John Esposito. Uh, any Chairman, questions? Sir. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry, Dwayne. Mr. No, you, um, yeah, I just wanted to, um, you know, just, just mention, reinforce something that you said to the petitioners, just, just really focus on that whole administration aspect of it, because, you know, I, I don't want to see it, it go away because of very, very difficult logistical issues. And that's something that could, could, could derail the thing. So just make sure that that whole thing is tight. Who, who, who does what, when, why, how, and that also ties into the qualifications. Uh, there's a few different levels. I mean, what's going to be the criteria to qualify? Um, so, so those are some very, very important aspects of this whole thing that need to be brought to our next um, meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, thank you, Mr. Perkins. I just want to mention uh, Councilman Rotello joined as well, if you haven't seen. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> and Councilman Rotello is here. Now, don't pull a Ben Chianese, Paul, and ask us to bring you back up to speed. We're not doing that. So, all right. Is there any other um, ex officio members that might like to like to chime in at this time? In at this time? Mr. Mr. Chair. I'm looking at who? Um, Mr. Esposito. John Esposito. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'd like to briefly state that I definitely support incentives to recruit uh, new volunteer firemen. And I, I have to concur with many of the concerns that were already brought to light, uh, you know, especially, uh, you know, which types of volunteers on what levels would actually qualify for an abatement. And since we, I see uh, volunteer uh, president council, uh, council president, Mr. Coakley, I wonder if he could give me a, an idea how many volunteers we have in the city. Okay, um, Mr. Coakley, I see that you're with us this evening and welcome. Uh, would you have that information for us? Yeah, we have, uh, good evening everyone. Yep, and uh, we have right now 92 tagged firefighters and 73 of which live in Danbury that uh, actively volunteer. We have 14 fire police and 14 fire police that live in Danbury. And we have 12 ladies auxiliary and eight of which live in Danbury. Hopefully that answers the question if you need additional yeah. information or. No, okay. that, that, that's definitely satisfactory. In, in fact, you actually pointed out another good, uh, you know, brought up another good point. You know, um, many of the volunteers may not even live in the city. And also one thing I'd also like to additionally point out is that it seems the majority of the purpose for this is to recruit new volunteers, which most likely would be younger individuals, which may not even own property. So I, I don't know if the benefit extends to the property tax on their vehicles as well. You know, these are just issues that really need to be sorted out. And certainly this is the first step in that process. So, um, you know, I, I definitely, like I said, I support uh, incentives, you know, recruit, recruit volunteers and, uh, you know, also in a, in a matter of thanks to our uh, volunteers for their years of service. But, and definitely I, I'd like to see this, you know, continue in, a, in multiple meetings here to, to sort these issues out. Hmm. Thanks very much. Thank you, Mr. Esposito. Thank you, Mr. Esposito. Okay, is there any other uh, ex officios that wish to speak? Any of the petitioners? Okay, um, all right, so what we'll do then at this time is we'll extend this committee. I'll entertain it. Uh, uh, first of all, um, the formality, I need to close it. So I'm going to close discussion on the matter, bring it back to uh, within the committee. Um, so what we'll need to do is extend the committee for the purpose of uh, garnering the information and the facts that we need to, to move forward uh, to the next steps as discussed earlier this evening. So at this point in time, I'd uh, like to, entertain a motion on that matter, Mr. Perkins, I believe. Yeah, Mr. 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 Chairman, I'll make a motion. Uh, I'd like to uh, make a motion to continue this meeting at the call of the chair. Thank you. Okay, um, so the motion has been made, seconded by Mr. Priola. Second. Mr. Priola, thank you. Okay, so any discussion on the extension? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 
Opposed? Aye. Okay, so the meeting will be extended until the call of the chair, which means that uh, Mr. Salvatore and petitioners, I'm looking to you, Frank, because I know you're driving the ship here. Um, mm -hmm. Get your facts together, get back to me, and then we'll, uh, we'll, as we have this time here, we'll create another meeting and maybe dig deeper into the weeds on the next meeting with the facts that we have to work with. Okay? Okay. Yep. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. And thank you to our volunteers and, of course, our paid fire. Thanks, Thank Frank, you. and everyone. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay.